All right. What is up, my brothers? What's going on? Uh, I'm still transitioning over to the new channel. And uh, here, let me just drop the link in the chat. So if you guys are watching this anywhere else on the interwebs, it would be greatly appreciated if you head over to the Unplugged Alpha new podcast channel because that's where these are going to live on a go-forward basis. So thanks for tuning in tonight. We're going to be uh, chopping it up on how culture is polluting the minds of women and men today. Let's get some more lights on. There's a whole lighting setup you got to go through, a sequence of events before every show that I'm not staying on top of. All right. Who's in the chat? I see Moff's in there. Jaron's in the house. Got a few of the other, other regulars. We're good. Good flow. Stream of quality is all right. So let me um, let me do this here. Let's go and share this video real quick. I'm not going to play this. You guys can go check it out yourselves afterwards. But this is something I published about six years ago now. And the um, title of this video is Why Are Today's Men So Feminized? Um, and the thumbnail, does it show it up over here? They sometimes put it up for me on this uh, plugin. It's a Chrome plugin. Anyway, it doesn't show up on this one. It's only on my desktop. So go watch it. It's 34 minutes. I cover a bunch of stuff in there. And it's like my projections back then at that time uh, have all come true. And even worse, if we're being honest. Um, so, man, it's so bizarre to go back and watch that old video talking about how things got to where they were at at that time because it was around that time that Donald Trump was just elected uh, president of the United States. I was talking about it in that video. Um, and I was really just getting into the pussification of the West really and what was contributing to it. But yeah, that was, that was younger rich with a darker beard. Although I have to say I'm comparing the, the top picture over there to this one, but I got to say, man, the salt and pepper looks, the, the, the salt looks better than the pepper, if we're being honest. Anyway, that's what my barber thinks too. So are we going to get into this? First thing I got to do, guys, is I got to ask you again. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing this until we get most of y'all over to the new channel. But let me pull this out over here. Um, you're going to have to, I'm going to drop it in the chat again head over to the new podcast channel. Um, let's see here. Come over and sub the new, because I'm going to cancel the feed on all the other stuff that I'm streaming. So here's the new link. If you guys are watching the replay and wondering what happened to the link, just go to the YouTube search bar and type in the Unplugged Alpha. You'll see the icon for my book cover. It's pretty hard to miss. Uh, that is the official home of this podcast going forward. So I just dropped that in the link. I'm going to kill the feed on the other YouTube channel because you guys should head over there and uh, remove. And we're good. Yeah. So do me that solid and join us. And it looks like we're, looks like it's working. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, yes. Uh, Super Chats are activated on the new channel. Thank you, Karen. It's always good to have Karen in the house. Um, yeah, it's killed. Kill it. Yeah. Barbershops like guys, barbershops are one of the few like bastions of masculinity, like an official barbershop where it's like all dudes. They only service men, generally speaking. I mean, some, you know, you get the uh, mom in there with her son that she wants to get cleaned up and she's probably doing it the right way. It's, it's, it's better than taking them over to supercuts for some bullshit haircut. Um, you know, let some, let some Persian guy with an epic beard do it for him sort of thing. <laughs> that's, that's why I go, but yeah. So, um, let's, let's start going through some of these. Now that I got you guys over to the new channel. And again, thanks for, thanks for joining up. Yeah. The chat, Chris is open on the new channel. Um, there's, I don't know, there's a sequence of steps it has to go through to get, um, channel memberships offered and super chat, super chat just got activated today. So. If you guys want to super chat questions, they'll they'll pop easy for me. Um, you get the idea. 
A lot of, a lot of interesting guys in the live chat. Hey, Rich, where do you get your beard trimmed? Hey, Rich, what dojo did you go to? It's like, hey, why don't I just give you my home address while I'm at it too, right? Um, I like, uh, I like a little bit of privacy in my life. Let's just, let's just call it that way. All right. You know, it's only the guys in my inner, inner circle that know the details that know where I live and, you know, know my neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? All right. So culture is doing quite the number. And again, I talked about this six years ago. What do we start with? Um, it's exceptionally rare today, guys, for you to run into a woman that's not brainwashed by um, modern culture, postmodernism, uh, liberalism, whatever it is you want to call it. It's it's interesting because I have conversations with family, friends, friends of family, in-laws, you know, all that sort of stuff. And there's always just like a random drop of like, oh, that's misogynistic or some other, you know, popular soundbite that's going on right now, xenophobic, homophobic, blobophobic, whatever the phlobics are that they keep stacking on top of each other and piling up. But the point remains is both men and women have been polluted by this new narrative of where, you know, where we got to today. There was a, there was a, here, let me show this to you because I like, I like to chuck in my visuals, right? So what, when I was a kid, I was a Boy Scout, okay? And when I was a Boy Scout, the kinds of things we used to do were we'd have to have contests like see if you can start a fire with just one match. And you'd have to go into a forest and you'd get like birch bark and kind of peel it off a tree, but not so much that it hurts the tree, but just enough that it's good to start a fire. Because they would lecture you on that. They, they tell you, you know, peeling off too much birch bark is like peeling off the skin on a human. Why would you do that to a tree? So not only do they teach you masculinity traits, but they also taught you con like most of these vegan nerds out right now mar marching around don't even know that probably, but they would teach boy scouts how to light a fire with one match. They would have you compete. They would have you, um, set up camp, play capture the flag. Um, fucking like all, like all this cool shit that we used to do when I was a kid, British bulldog murder ball, murder ball was a big thing too, right? Like we used to do, um, murder ball massively tons. And this here is a video that showed up in my timeline of my Twitter. And it says, uh, now Boy Scouts are marching in Seattle at the Pride Parade. And you see these young boys with the various flags and stuff like that. And I couldn't imagine any of the, I, I can't remember what they call them, troopers or, or troops or something like that. Um, but like the Boy Scout leaders ever say anything like, okay, guys, we're not going to play British Bulldog today, which is basically like, two teams running across a field, smashing into each other, beating the shit out of each other. It was like a, like kids would get hurt. I remember, I remember there was one kid that broke a bone. There's quite a few times kids got scraped up, but that was part of it, right? Like that's part of playing British bulldog or murder ball. You get hit in the head with a, a ball as fast as some kid can whip it. <laughs> You're going to feel it. Now, you know, the priority is uh, marching with what's trending, you know, with whatever flag is trending or whatever's going on that time, time of the month or whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Troop leaders. Thanks, Moth. But yeah, that's, that's where we're at today. I bet none of these Boy Scout kids can light a fire with one match. I, I doubt they ever play British Bulldog. Unlikely. Or Murder Ball. They probably took, I would assume because it's called Murder Ball or Dodge Ball is like the friendly name. I would assume that they've taken that out of most school systems or most most extracurricular groups, whether it's Boy Scouts or Brownies or whatever it happens to be. But yeah, um, that was one of the things that you know got me all fired up about doing this podcast. And and then you know this morning I saw this interview with uh, Andrew Tate tra trending with some pretty girl who was a covert feminist. I mean, you can't define it any other way than than that. And it's like, she wanted to, typical modern woman, tip, like typical, like you, like guys run into these chicks all the time. It's like, well, I want to be treated like a lady and have doors open for me and take me out on dates and dress me up all pretty and flowers and shit. But if you cheat, I'm going to cheat too. And it's the exact same fucking thing, right? And 
this entire narrative of like what's good for the goose is good for the gander. It's it's so bizarre because they want the old school, yeah, pay for my shit and house me and put babies in me and let's make a family. But they also want to browbeat the shit out of the guy or pretend like they're uh, at the very least. Well, they call it equality. Like, let's be equals. Like, aren't we equals now? But the truth of the matter is, is feminism isn't about equality. It's about it's a superiority movement. OK, uh, it's a supremacy movement more than anything. It doesn't like men um, at all. Um, <laughs> in fact, it, it's 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 quite hostile. And that's why, you know, when you hear me talk about things like, I don't know, divorce law, you know, for example, or, or child or child custody issues, you know, for example, um, it, it's like it's fully infused in all of that. That's just the way that it's, it's at. Right. It's crazy. Let me get some of these super chats that have been popping up here. Um, See, the reason why I like the members only chat, and I will turn it on when it becomes available available to me, is it's easier for me to follow through in the chat. Otherwise, it just it just goes insane to find super chats. Oh, hey, Glenn. Uh, here's my prediction on a Roe versus Wade. Alpha are going to smash hotties. Hotties will become mommies. Betas will marry mommies in exchange for access to a Victoria's Secret. That's pretty much what happens right now. Um, the whole like Roe versus Wade thing, like I don't really care about it, to be honest with you. It's like, whatever. I mean... I don't see the problem, right? There's at least a dozen, probably two dozen forms of birth control. Abortion isn't birth control. I don't care, you know, whatever side of the fence you're on. To me, it's a moot point, right? Like, just don't be a hoe and use birth control if you're going to have uh, sex, whatever. But that's, you know, that's the new thing. Everybody's got to be mad about that right now. There's um, somebody uh, sent me a couple of screenshots to a few of the uh, tweets with... Um, Women on dating apps now are demanding that you have a vasectomy before uh, they'll go out with you uh, or they're looking for proof of a vasectomy. Before they go. And then you see the photographs of like these women that you have available to you if you have a vasectomy and they're atrocious. Like, OK, I don't want to get into like describing, but you know what I'm saying when I'm saying it, because these things on YouTube can be problematic. But you know what I'm saying? I'm sure you've seen it. <laughs> Uh, murder ball was, yeah, murder ball was dope, man. Murder ball, British bulldog was my favorite. Cause that was just like bashing in other kids. That was just like, you just charge and tackle them. I think pretty much is what we did with British bulldog. Just beat the crap out of other kids. So into that, man. But I doubt they do that today. Now it's carry flags. And, um, if you have a pronoun and, um, you know, go use the, uh, inclusive bathroom. That's like whatever gender you want it to be. And it's like, I like, look, stuff like that's probably always been around if we're being honest, but now it's like, they just want to shove it down everybody's throat all the time. You turn on cable TV, you, you know, you watch a commercial on a billboard or on TV, or if you're in an elevator or you're a dentist office or some shit like that, I don't have cable. Like I canceled my cable 2012. It's been over a decade. I've not had cable. I don't watch that shit. The stupid thing about cable that I don't understand and why people still have it is you're paying for them to serve bullshit that's going to brainwash you. You're actually paying them to brainwash you. It's the stupidest fucking setup I've ever seen. And if you're still running cable right now, ask yourself this question. Why the fuck am I paying them to brainwash me with this horse shit or brainwash my kids or my wife or whoever happens to live in your house? Because that's what you're basically doing. They're polluting you with messages that do not serve you at all. Okay. Um, in that video that I talked about when I kicked off at the start, there was, um, I think it was a Roomba vacuum commercial that I inserted into that video from six years ago. And I was talking about how essentially uh, advertisements and, and commercials basically portray men as bumbling, retarded idiots that are absolutely incompetent and absolutely useless. And men are the, and sorry, and women are the saviors of the household. They're responsible. They can get things done. They know how to get tidy. So the, so the commercials are now at, at that time, six years ago, when I presented that are serving narratives and lies and, um, trying to brainwash people into believing that guys are stupid and women are superior and we should always defer to them and just give her all your money and let her go buy whatever she wants, including whatever the fuck it is they're trying to sell you in the commercial. And that's how they've been rolling for a while. They do that today and it's even worse today, right? Now they're now it's whatever the new thing is that's that's trending, whether it's 
get jabs, support a flag or that flag or a country war or whatever. I mean, hey, here's a new flash. Do you think maybe both Putin and Zelensky are assholes? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. Why do like why do you have to support the new thing or or trending thing, right? Like why can't we think for ourselves? It's like, you know, if you don't update your fucking Facebook with some circle flag around you supporting whatever the new thing is, then people are like, "Oh, well, he's not conforming to the narrative. He's not one of the sheep." Yeah, you're damn right. Sitcoms I don't even watch anymore. I couldn't I couldn't watch uh fuck, I mean, you know, you can go back to the Cosby show. Right. Bill Cosby was portrayed as a moron. All the women in the family were the best and he was an idiot sort of thing. Uh, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Right. She ran the household. You know, the big bad judge, the, you know, the bad boy, you know, he got his ass licked every single time by his, his wife. So, again, this is not a new phenomenon. It's been going on for decades now. And you wonder why you're dealing with a generation of boss bitches today. I was at the gym doing my chest workout, got the plates on, feeling good, got a pump. I'm listening to this fucking personal trainer talking to this middle-aged woman, telling her that she's a bad boss bitch for moving metal up and down, you know, sort of thing. Like, this this, this hashtag boss bitch gets thrown at everything nowadays. Um, I had an interview on a woman's podcast a couple of weeks ago. You'll find some of the clips on my clips channel now. Uh, they live there. And, um, I mean, you know, she was pleasant. She was inviting. She had read my book. She said her boyfriend, you know, read my book. Um, and there's a clip on there somewhere where we're talking about, um, you know, culture polluting the minds of, you know, people like we are today sort of thing. And she's sitting there wearing a bad bitch t-shirt with tats and was a single mom as well. Um, and you know, we're talking about red flags, right? But you come to these realizations and you see the code in the matrix when you read my book, when you watch my content, when you see enough of my podcast, when I do these one-on-one -on -one consults, like people get to it eventually, right? But then they've like left this trail of bad decisions along the way and they run a bass, boss bitch business and they've got sleeve tats sort of thing, right? Like high notch counts, men aren't generally interested in women that have a high like number of visible tattoos, right? like tattooing's a tattooing women is a more modern phenomenon okay men it's been around for a long time in some cultures in some societies it's existed in part of the female population but it's primarily masculine dominance right it's it's just weird man like all of these things that happen i think i think that the most dangerous one for guys today are the covert feminists okay um that uh, chick, that that pretty girl that dealt with Andrew in that uh, clip that I mentioned earlier is a classic example of a covert feminist. Um, I'm, I'm pretty. I, I have I have the flash and the pizzazz. So in today's modern world, it's not just like the like the psychos that you see see trending on um, Twitter or on social media that are yelling, um, you know, like here, I got another one here on my timeline. This one, <laughs> you've probably seen this one too. Like they don't just look like this anymore, right? Come on, playback. Let's right to the start. Like they don't just look like this anymore. This is, you know, this is what you've been, you know, used to. You know, this is what you've been told. Just stay away from that. But that's not enough anymore, right? Most of these women that you're going to deal with today, um, as you come across someone dating apps or a uh, cold approach or, you know, social events or whatever you happen to be doing, um, you're going to run into a good number of them that are, that, that have polluted values, that have uh, toxic feminist values that are instilled in them. Men and women are equal, but take me out to dinner. Men and women are equal, <laughs> but, uh, you know, go out and make the money and take care of me and I'll stay home and raise the kids, right? It's like, you know, and then you ask them a question like, hey, do you think you could beat me up? You know, are men and women really equal? It's like, no, you can't. Like, even if I had one of my arms tied behind my back, even a, a chick that competes at my dojo probably couldn't beat me up, right? It's like men and women are different. And why do we stray away from that? Why? Because society, culture, I'll tell you what it is. It's a psyop, you know, at the end of the day. 
they don't want you strong and independent and thinking for yourself. They want you plugged into narratives. They want you plugged into lies. I mean, there's a reason why my book was called The Unplugged Alpha, because you're unplugging from bullshit that doesn't serve you. When you go far enough down the rabbit hole and you start to see all this code in the matrix, covert feminists pop like that, like as soon as I hear one of these chicks talking for a few minutes, oh, she's a covert feminist automatically, right? And then you've got ones that look more feminist, but are trying to return to their more natural roots, like that Leandra ch uh, chick that did that podcast on my clips channel. You, again, you'll see the clips over there. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, they lie to women about having a family. It's go get a degree, go and buy your own house, get your own car. You don't need no man. And then they end up being like 39 or 40. And then they're just like, well, you know, I should have done this in my 20s. Um, <laughs> that's when you get those chicks on the dating apps that are, that are uh, uh, that have baby rabies. And they're like, if you don't want to talk about kids on the first date, then I don't even want to go out with you. It's like, why would you even waste your time, dude? <laughs> why would you? Why? Like, why not just like start Googling? I wonder what would happen if I put my penis in a pencil sharpener, right? Like it's, it's like the same thing. You're inviting chaos, man. But that's where we get to, right? <clears throat> Society celebrates single mothers big time, big time. Oh, you're so strong and independent. I do the job of a mother and a father. You know, you see that on Father's Day all the time, right? What's to celebrate? The kid doesn't have a father or you've removed him from the household or you scared him off or any number of things could have, you know, could have happened. The guy was a degenerate loser, right? This is what happens when you don't allow fathers or men to play a role in girls and who they date and when they date and, you know, arranging marriages and stuff like that. Like there's like there's a strong argument for a strong culture when you do stuff like that. I'm not saying that that's where things need to go. I don't think things were really there to that to that degree in North American culture. North America is so interesting, man. Yeah. Um, they teach men to never stand up to women. That's another note that I jotted down over here. It's like, you're not allowed to have an opinion. You're not allowed to offer a view. It's like, how many guys I've heard say happy wife, happy life is just, it just drives me insane. Every time I fucking hear it somewhere, social gathering, some event, you know, hearing an in-law or like a relative of an in-law, you know, regurgitate that, that, that lyric, happy wife, happy life. And you're like, you know, dude, you're not banging. Like I can tell, I know what the face of a guy looks like that's banging a lot versus a guy that's not. And it's like, if you're taught never to stand up to women, Women aren't going to respect you, one. And two, you're never really going to optimize yourself to have the best experience. And you're sure as fuck not going to raise useful kids. You're going to raise pussies, right? Yeah. Man caves. That's another one I've talked about a few times. I want to talk about man caves again. You see these guys that are all proud to have their fucking TVs and their couches and some beer fridge in their garage. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'm watching a game in my man cave. I'm the fucking dude. Yeah. While the wife fucking runs the entire house and he pays for it all. You're not the dude if you're rolling in a man cave. My house is my man cave. That's an $8,000 restoration hardware couch. Okay. Chicks would not let you spend that kind of money on a couch that looks like that. Oh, it's not a good looking couch. I don't give a fuck. It's mine. My house is my man cave. All right. Let me get the uh, call-in link. Uh, where's my invite? Let's chop it up with some people. I got a, a couple other notes here, but I just wanted to get the call-in link out there before we do this. All right. Uh, call in and ask a question. All right. Um, all right. So there's a StreamYard link, and I'm pretty sure if that goes to my YouTube, I can pin it. Oh, yes. The option is available still. Thank you. So that's pinned at the top of the YouTube. So if you guys are watching somewhere else um, on the internets, make sure you're over on YouTube and StreamYard link is there. 
every couple of days I get an email or a DM from somebody that's like, Hey, I want to call on your show. How do I do it? It's like, dude, watch the show live. I always give you the instructions live. Yes. So call in, ask a question, bring whatever you know you want to the table. It's open everybody, men, women, whatever you want. Let's chop it up. Chop it up. All right. Oh, let me run my um, run my loop, my ad insert. All right, check out this quick ad. I'm going to pay some bills and uh, have a quick drink here. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplement Line, Grandike Soap Company, and Chad's Face Scrub. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplement Line. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients, and unlike cheap supplements from China and plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine-disrupting plastics in your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is an easily digested bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by their various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or just use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Men, I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Gentlemen, my go-to face scrub to keep this manly face clean and clear is Chad's. Again, it's incredibly important to me to only use products with all natural ingredients without nasty chemicals that disrupt male hormone levels or convert to estrogen in your body. And unlike watery scrubs that slip between your fingers, this thick face scrub with black lava sand gives you powerful results in one go. Visit getchads.com and you'll be redirected to the Amazon store you'll get 10% off when you use coupon code GETCHADS10. You can find all the links I've just mentioned pinned below in the top YouTube comment. If you wanna learn more about why I endorse these natural products to my audience, search on my YouTube channel for an episode I did with Dr. Anthony J titled, Playing to Win Number 21, How Estrogenics Make You Fat, Sick, and Infertile with Dr. Anthony J. Let's get on with the show. I'm just scrolling through the comments here. Um, you guys, you guys have interesting ideas and opinion. Like um, Mo here says, we need to revoke women's right to vote or the West is finished. Yeah, that's not happening, man. I, I can't see that. Um, what is that? Uh, people in the U.S. call it repealing the 19th or something. I think it was the 19th Amendment that um, let they like back back in the day, you had to have property rights to vote. And um, that was generally held by the head of the household, which was a guy. So, uh, you know, he would cast a vote on what he thought would be good for, for that political environment. And then women started making a stink about it. We want to vote too. And, you know, they unpin the property rights. So um, things certainly changed when voting patterns changed. You know that? They, you know, they definitely did. You know, what's, you know what's different about North America and South America? Because South America was mostly colonized by the Spanish. And North America was mostly colonized by... Uh, the British, um, with, with some French and of course Spanish and South and all that. And part of the reason why South America is such a fucking messed up place right now is because when the Spanish came and colonized, they didn't, um, they, they basically became the overlords, right? The conquistors came, uh, whoever was the king, the ruling emperor, you know, whoever they happened to be, they basically enslaved the, uh, indigenous population to, perform mining tasks, you know, extract silver, gold, you know, stuff like that. And when the British tried to use that card in North America, when they landed, they weren't received well for that because in North America, they were, the natives were mostly nomadic hunter gatherers. So they would move around. They didn't want to trade with the visitors. Whereas down in South America, uh, they were more open to them and they invited them in and they offered to trade and like, uh, 
agriculture, you know, get involved in all that to feed them sort of stuff. Whereas in North America, it was just warring, it was fighting. So that's how democracy um, played such a huge role in the development of, of North American culture. And I'm pretty sure, we, you know, we can safely say at this point, the heyday um, is, is well past now, <laughs> you know, if we can put it that way. Um, but yeah. All right, let's see what we got here in the waiting area. We got a lot of, uh, okay, we got a lot of cameras off. So we got a Tracy here. Let's see what Tracy's got for us. Tracy. Hey, what's up? What's up? What can I do for you, man? Good. Um, so I was at a wedding this past weekend, and it's funny you mentioned it. You took the words right out of my mouth, but okay. I was talking to this guy who was praising happy wife, happy life, and next to him was his wife, and she's mm -hmm. literally this, she looked like a hippo. Like she was <laughs> this fat, round woman, blonde, looked like one of those wannabe desperate housewives. She was okay. like really super tan, lots of makeup, yeah. had rings on every finger. And I'm just thinking to myself, this, and then I found out later on from someone, someone out the wedding that this guy is worth over $2 million. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking to myself, how could you make that much money and still have no options whatsoever? Like, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, hey, listen, you know, that's like guys, you know, when you've been fed a steady diet of bullshit in your entire life and, um, you know, not standing up to women and putting women up on a pedestal, um, a hippopotamus can look good to you. Right. And, you know, if that's what you get, then that's what you get. Right. He literally he literally told me the best advice he got from his father was to always say yes to everything your wife says, because after the fight, you're yeah. going to end up giving in to her to make up anyway. Yeah, that and doesn't jive like, in yeah. my world, man. No, not at all. And that, that's why I was like, all right, I'm, this conversation is done after this guy gets up because <laughs> like this is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it's it's very common. It, it, it's it's yeah. more uncommon for guys like us to have these conversations. And then that's when people start calling us misogynists or who hurt yep. you or, you know, why don't you like women? It's like, bro, you know, you tell yourself whatever you want that makes you sleep good at night. But at the end of the day, I know that my life is way better than yours and I would not trade my life for yours at all. So thanks for your honest exactly. opinion, right? Right. And, and I had one question, though. Um, yeah. So at, at the wedding, um, I was there with my girlfriend. I've been with my girlfriend for like two years mm. and she's the oldest and she has two younger sisters. And the, the wedding we were at was for her youngest sister. Uh -huh. So like the whole time, you know, I'm trying to be a good boyfriend. We're at the wedding, I'm being nice to everybody and her aunts, her uncles, her cousins. They're all so when are you two going to get hitched? Yeah, it was so freaking annoying. It was like the yeah. entire time. It was always somebody asking. And I get to the point where I actually got mad at my girlfriend. And I said, yeah. if, if one more person asks me, I'm, I'm going back to the hotel room. Like, this yeah. is ridiculous. So, like, how Another do you one of my favorites, that? you know, beyond that, too, is when they're like, oh, you're so lucky to have her. Right. That's right, when I yeah. always like bat back. I'm like, no, dude, she's she's really very lucky to have me. In fact, exactly. Like, yeah, so I was just curious, like, because you, you, you know, you want to play nice. I've, I've known these people for two years. Some of them are good people. So I push you... back, man. You know, like my thing yeah. is to push back. So when somebody's. You know, like I gave that example of, oh, like you're so lucky to have her sort of thing. I'm like, no, she's actually lucky to have me, bro. And I right. and I say it in all seriousness because I truthfully believe it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so like the stuff like like when are you two going to get hitched? Like if you don't want to get married yeah. and just say, I don't have any immediate plans. Thanks for asking. Fuck off. And well, yeah, I just laugh, and, and a lot of them are drunk, too. So I, I just kept saying, yeah. I'll take it under advisement. I'll take it under advisement. J just you can always use amuse and mastery, you know, stuff like that. Like, oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. I can get married and be miserable like you, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it was, i mean i couldn't get over how many people said it like one, once or twice i kind of just laughed it off but i'm 33 and my girlfriend's girlfriend? 20 uh 27 yeah so yeah so like she's getting look yeah she's she's in her family's age. doing the right, right thing they're like trying to get her locked down because they know and she inherently knows that you know she's running out of eggs and like mm -hmm. her value in the sexual marketplace is not as high as a 23 year old. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you want to have kids and she's a good woman and you've edited her for a few years, yeah. have the kids, but fuck the marriage part, forget inviting the state in your house and all that other, that's just my opinion. I mean, I mean, right. kids are great if you can raise them together and you can lead the family. But like mm -hmm. one of the points that I'm making with this podcast guys is that's incredibly hard. If you live in the West, you sound like you live in Northeastern United States, Jersey, yeah, I'm New in York, Boston area. Boston. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, like you're like a conventionally sound and masculine dude, right? But mm -hmm. all of society is all just shut up, do the right thing, man up, put a ring on her finger. And then, you know, if you don't have frame, if you don't have a, a woman that doesn't have like, does like, 
does your girlfriend agree with about 90% of your morals and values? Well, see, that's what's so funny is like I've literally converted her because mm -hmm. when I first met her, she was a hashtag boss girl to the core. Right. And I don't get along with her two sisters at all because they're mm -hmm. everything that you just talked about in a negative way. Got it. So I've done a really good job last year and a half or so converting her into not thinking that way. Mm -hmm. But every time she's around her family, it's like starting over again. Yeah. You know how it is with girlfriends vibing and family vibing, and they all, they all have that mindset. The father has the mindset, so it's yeah. like, like I want it to work. And she's she when we're alone, we we have no problems. Like she's in my frame. I, yeah. She listens to what I say. It, it goes that way all, a lot. But every time it's, it's the family's the problem because it's just. And, and I actually told her that one time. I'm like, you know, we're gonna have to get to the point where you're gonna have to pick a side, and it's either gonna be me or your family because. It, I'm not going to change into their way. And if you're not willing to go mm. full speed into mine, we're going to have a problem. Is she super tied into her family values? Oh, she I mean, she's in, madly in love with them. She praises her parents. Yeah. And, and, and which is normal, credit, which is too, like a good sign, right? You know, like you want no, a chick good. that's got a very good relationship, good. but yeah, it sounds like her dad's a bit of a pushover. Um, it sounds they all drank. And, and her, her parents were both virgins. They lost their virginity yeah. to each other. Yeah, you know, yeah, she yeah. comes from that kind of home. So, yeah, like, but I mean, and, she and, wasn't and her, a virgin when you met her, though, right? She so she told me her notch count was five, but I know you're double at score. That's yeah, kind of the way to go. So, yeah. but you know, she's she's a good girl. She's a Christian girl, so she did. Her grandfather's a pastor, so she does mm. have a lot of good qualities. Um, but she's also got her framed degree in mahogany and all that bullshit too so <laughs> okay like, so she's one of those professionals eh? exactly she's a, she's a professional no teacher yeah. master's degree yeah well so, look man you're 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 basically talking about inviting a f female into your life that 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 is drunk on the kool-aid that i was talking about earlier mm -hmm. you know she's going to enter your frame she's going to agree with you on 90 percent of the shit but if if conflict arises i can tell you what's going to happen chicks like that they go right to their friends and family and then mm -hmm. they're like why did you do this and da 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 da, da and they start chirping in her ear and she's like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah 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 and then she comes back to you and she goes yo tracy um i was talking to my family and it's like you know you you're back to square one right so right exactly like if i'm being honest ha have fun vetter dater you know do whatever you want but mm -hmm. it, like Unless she's totally in your frame, then mm -hmm. you've got to be super careful with chicks because they're covert feminists, right? Like, they, I'm sure she's pretty. I mean, you don't sound like a guy that would date a hippopotamus because you define a hippopotamus. No, she's very so. pretty. Very pretty. Yeah. yeah, she's very feminine. She wears yeah. makeup and all that. Um, it's just like, like I said, but I, I mean, had to she's like, her. she's, she's potentially 10, 10 to 12 years away from an extra 50 pounds and short purple hair <laughs> and, you know, going to marches and holding up signs and, get yep. mad about you know whatever the trending thing is sort of stuff mm -hmm. so you've got to make sure that you know the frame control is there that that she agrees and supports with your direction and she's always going to defer to that i mean you'd obviously if you're a stand-up guy never do anything to like cross her family but at the same time i have no trouble standing up to anybody like i get into it with people all the time that are within my family or in-laws and it's mm -hmm. just like, no, you're absolutely wrong. And I don't agree with that. And that's a stupid conversation. And then almost all the time, they just back off. They're just like, you know what? I don't want to go there with you. It's like, cool, because I'm not stopping. So you better shut up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I've gotten into it with her. Her sister's like a year younger than her. And she's flat out told me to my face that men are the inferior sex. Yeah, there and you I'm go. Just, you know, it's just stuff like that. And then yeah. I, 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 I'm caught in the rock and a hard place at that point because it's like, well, that's when you cut up, you know, my girl's well, sister. But at the well, same time, that's when you come at him with like, you know, well, what would happen if guys took a, I don't know, two weeks off and all went on vacation? <laughs> Toilets wouldn't flush, electricity wouldn't work, <laughs> stoplights wouldn't work. There'd be nobody to police crime. Fires would never be put out by firefighters. So just shut the fuck up. Exactly. You know, with your nonsense is basically yeah, the way that you want ridiculous. to ridiculous. It. It's funny when she said that, I said, oh, well, let's arm wrestle right now. Yeah. And we'll see who's the stronger set. You're so dominant. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Of course, you didn't want that, but. All right, Tracy, I got to run. I got to right. get a bunch more of these. Thanks for hopping in, All right, thank in, you. Man. I appreciate it. See you, buddy. All right. Yeah, that, like, perfect example. Oh, you know, if you're superior to men, then let's arm wrestle, right? Let's do shots, you know. I'll let you punch me in the stomach, and then I'll punch you in the stomach, right? I don't know. I don't get it. Like, 
men and women are far better together than they are apart, but men need to take the masculine leadership role and women need to take the feminine role, right? There's blue jobs and there's pink jobs. Stop confusing them. Oh man, what a fucking clown show we live in sometimes. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Uh, We got G Milo. Dude, you're familiar, man. You've been here before. Every once in a while, I just try to pop in. Whenever, whenever I get my YouTube to actually show me that there's a live uh, stream going. So, um, cool. real quick, I'll cut it. You know, obviously, I've been following you now for about seven months or so, and um, t- you know, tapped in this red pill mentality. And around that same period of time, I started picking up yoga at, uh, at the local yoga joint here in downtown mm-hmm. Fort Lauderdale. Mm-hmm. And um, I think it's truly something that has significantly helped me when I'm faced with anxiety, whether it be work related, whether it be with women. Um, I know that you, you know, find yourself at a dojo training to kind of, you know, put yourself in that mental space Mm. um, outside of going to the gym and just lifting. And I think it's, you know, a valid uh, top, you know, just a life hack, as I would call it, uh, to, you know, share with some of the youth out there. I always kind of thought it was a very feminine thing to do. But as I've gotten older and I work out, you know, there's nothing more enjoyable than going to yoga in the evening, um, obviously enjoying the sights and sounds that go along with it. And, you know, uh, having some time to just mentally go back to my own personal state. So just wanted to kind of share that with uh, some of the folks on the um, on the program. So do you do hot yoga, regular yoga? Like what kind of yoga? Yeah, I do hot yoga. It's about 45 minutes. You know, it. Uh, it's, I live in a downtown area, so there's a lot of, you know, just the local girls here and there that also go to Mm -hmm. that, you know, particular yoga, you see them out after the fact. Um, and I found it to just be a very beneficial, you know, if I'm, I've heard it's a honeypot. It's definitely a lot of fit women, mostly attractive that do yoga, not a lot of dudes. And if there are some dudes, there's usually some like, you know, older, yeah, not right. Not all put together. Right. Um, so, I mean, like you must do well there, right? When it comes to games. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, I've done well. It's, it's, but above and beyond just the girl side of things, mm-hmm. you know, if I'm having a stressful moment in day or work with society as a whole, you know, I've learned some breathing techniques that kind of allow me to escape uh, what society is feeding you mm-hmm. and get back to your own mental state that's best for your work or whatever. Current yeah, whatever that happens to be, be, man. I just love hitting a fucking heavy bag. Like, that's my thing. Yeah, everyone. If you like yoga, you do yoga, man. I like. I just like beating the shit out of heavy bag. Yeah, I used to do boxing with some buddies. A buddy of mine trained MMA, and I trained with him for a while. And uh, at this point in my life, I'm just I just go to LA Fitness, go to the gym, and then use that in the evening. Um, That's good. That's it. That's good. Um, I got I got Moff here in the chat. He's fucking you know he's lecturing you right because he's because he's moving down to Florida. Oh, Um, another one. I have a rule: every guy that moves to Florida must bring three girls with him at this point in time. Well, he's telling you to get in the one percent and stop being a fucking Nancy, dude. When he when he's in town, maybe we can uh, we'll link up. I'll show him around. Some All right, fun. man. I'll see you later. Thanks, man. Um, okay, so if you guys want to hop into the stream and ask a question, the link is pinned at the top of um, the YouTube channel, which is the Unplugged Alpha. If you're not there, you should go there and subscribe. And it just says at the top, call in and ask a question. It's a StreamYard link. You just click it and join. Uh, NB says a girl I'm seeing on a casual basis was over the other day. She saw your book and asked, what is this about? What do I say to that? (laughs) That's bound to happen. Um, look, all the women that have read my book, um, that are normal, that are pleasant, that embrace a strong masculine frame, like it. So you tell them whatever you want, man. Me personally. I don't fucking care what people think. Like, I don't care what people's opinion are of the books on my bookshelf, uh, the shows that I watch, the channels that I subscribe to. I've seen guys say that they're like afraid to go into YouTube because they don't want their subscription feed to be shown to their girlfriend because they're watching my videos or something like that. It's like, you pussy. Like, stand up, lift up your skirt, grab your nuts, have a backbone, and... Just fucking nod it off, man. Amuse mastery. Oh, yeah, that's my uh, Bible over there. Don't touch it sort of thing. Say whatever you want to say. It doesn't really matter, right? Like, it's it's your life, guys. You know, 
putting yourself first is incredibly important. Don't do it. Doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, let's see what Joe's got for us here. He's in a live chat. Oh, we just lost Joe. Did I click the wrong button? Maybe not. All right. I got John over here. Who's got something. What do you got for me, John? You're muted by the way. There you go. Hey, Mr. Cooper. How you doing, man? Good, good. What's up? Uh, so I, um, I think I've just, so on one end, I feel like I've done a lot of the leveling up things in life. Mm -hmm. So, um, I started out like, kind of, you know, really broke in my twenties, going to school, working. Um, and then I finally got over six figures in my early thirties and making more money, been in shape, uh, trained jujitsu for four years. Um, so the thing is, so now I just, my question is like, I've been really down. Um, you know, I, I have therapy, I've had medication, uh, I work from home. And the thing is, I have a daughter, so I'm a single parent. I actually mm -hmm. was able to escape the divorce thing relatively unscathed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have my little girl, um, she's three. And I just feel like she's really my only purpose. Like all the other things I've been trying just How don't work. You, I'm 35 now. She's three. By the time she gets to being eight, nine, she's going to have opinion. By the time she is 12, 13, she's going to be a teenager. She's not even going to want to hang out with you. Yeah, I know. And I know I need to like, I know I need to do stuff for myself. But, you know, like my, my question really is, you know, in, in addition to being kind of down, not really having luck with women, even though I've done all that work to level up. Um, so not having that luck with women in spite of all the work I've done. And then on the, on the other note is like kind of not. Yeah. Really let me just stop you there. Anything. So, so what, see, like I'm always skeptical. So you, you guys are going to have to forgive me that are listening to the podcast and not seeing the video, but I'm always skeptical when somebody joins in without their camera on. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're truthfully where you say you're at and you're at comfort with it and you're anti-fragile, you would have your camera on. Right because you've got nothing to hide. It's only it's only people that use an avatar or like a camera off sort of approach that I have to raise questions about if you know what I'm saying, right? Because everybody comes at me like I've done the work, I've done the work, blah, blah, blah. Have you though? I, I've, I've done some of the work. I know, and like I said okay. before, I know I need to do more work. And the reason why I have my camera off is really because I'm still going through the divorce process. So I don't want to give okay, got uh, it. any, you know, because my the custody is still up in the air. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've done, I like I've, I went back to school after going to school once before, mm -hmm. became a software engineer, bought a house. So six figures, taking a second contract. Like, I, you know, I have the jujitsu ear. My ear, I have one swollen ear, so like mm. I've done a lot of work. I know I need to do a lot more, and I know I don't have game with women. And partly that is because, to be honest, like I really don't fully enjoy being with them because they they just really put no effort into into the relationship. So yeah, well, besides that's, that's sex, once in a while, it's... most women for the most part today, anyway, because again, they've been you know they've been corrupted, right? Like their like their brains have been polluted with this bullshit, which ultimately just boils down to never do anything for the express pleasure of men, right? It's, right. it's you know it's like basically the opposite of femininity. It's like it just turns women into terrible versions of men, right? So there's that. But with that being said if you're unplugged and you're high enough value, there are lots of women out there that are beautiful, that are feminine, that uh, will, you know, be very compliant, you know, for the most part. Um, so something you brought up, something you brought up actually made me, like, this is Jaren's kind in of the chat. You said, are you giving them reasons to put effort into you? Right? Because if a woman sees you as the highest value guy in her available option list, if you will, she's going to put effort into you hundred percent. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, well, I, I've done, I've done like, uh, I've traveled to see a girl and took her on this really nice date and, but she, she hangs out with dudes who own yachts and like friends. So like, well, I mean, uh, stop there for a sec. Cause I mean, yeah. you travel to take a girl out on a really nice date. Was that a first date? Was that a 10th, 10th date? Like what is that? Uh, first date, first date. I, it was something I wanted to do. So I brought her along. Okay. But hear me out though. Like it's a sim yeah. move. I feel you. I know. Yeah. It was a terrible, terrible decision. But something you said made me think really what my question. So I think I'm not anti-fragile because no. I wouldn't be stuck in bed every day. If, right. If and your camera would be on and you wouldn't be calling me right now because you'd right. be dope. Yeah. Right. So I, that, that's, so what would you suggest to like fix 
that you know like letting the world beat the crap out of you because that's where i'm at that point like i'm there's, just here to take care of my daughter at this there's point. there's seven pillars to attraction being red pill aware so unplugging from lies maxing out on your looks maxing out on your money maxing out on your status having solid game and frame with with women and being captivating not being boring right like there's you can do anything to a woman you want as, as long as you don't bore her right so if you haven't maxed out on those there's a podcast i did back in january i don't know what the number is but it just talks about the seven pillars but it's okay. doing the work in all those areas so when you say to me early on like you know like i've done the work what you're really saying was that i've been doing work but i'm not where rich needs me to be but i feel like i've made some progress right like am i right there right because when i think of my Keep salary going. i know it's going to get a little higher but then i i start to think like you know i can maybe make 200 at some point maybe mm -hmm. And but then I'm just like, why do I have to make two hundred thousand dollars to get a girl to comply? No, no, but it's not. Like that's but it's I, not I, to get yeah. a girl. Like the thing that you don't understand about money is money creates options, right? Money will get you to anti fragility, mm -hmm. right? You don't get money to get girls. Like that's where your thinking is wrong right now. Is you're thinking that you're doing these things just to get girls to like you, and that's the stupidest way to go about it. If you want money, it's because you want money for you. Like I need money for nice shit. Like I like fast cars, right? I like to do right. trips and travel, and you know have. Uh, incredible experiences and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't do that to get girls, right? Like I, like I make the money for myself and if there's girls or a girl that happens to be in my life, that is a compliment, not a pain in my ass. And I'll bring her along for the ride too. Right. Gotcha. See what um, I'm saying? But I mean, it, it's, it's always you first. Yeah. And I need to start putting myself, I, I guess one, one right, quick it's, question. It's, it's you first, your daughter second, and then she can come third. Yeah, my daughter's always going to be before anybody else. Um, my, my, I guess my last question is: so, in terms of body size, like I know you're a bigger guy, um, mm. you know, height wise, and you know, so I'm, I'm five ten. I'm probably like one seventy, and I compete, so I go between one sixty, one seventy, yeah. maybe one seventy five, and I'm, I kind of look frail. So a lot of women they see me and I have like skinny arms, but then if they see me with my shirt off, then they're like, oh, wow, I didn't know you had that. So is that your clothes body don't size fit you properly then? You're yeah, you need to get clothes that fit you properly. But th that body size, you know, 5'10", 170 is not scrawny, right? Is that like a good place to be around? Um, I think I was talking to Grego Gallagher on this when I had him on my other podcast. And I think he said he's 5'10", 180, 183, 185. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like you could put th like slab on a little bit more meat. But look, man, again, you know, do you feel good the way that you look? If you feel good the way that you look, then roll with it. If you feel like you're too lean and you want to throw on some muscle, then do it, right? But you do, again, you know, you do it for you. You're not doing it to get broads, right? You do it because you want to compete in the next weight class or you want to look more imposing when you're fighting, when you take your shirt off or whatever that happens to be. But it's not to get the girls. Yeah. Um, so how, how do you kind of, when you got divorced, did you, was there a period where girls were like so far on the back burner? How did you keep that up? Because I feel like I've been so brainwashed to yeah, get, like, validation. Like, like get clear of the divorce, you know, ink on the paper, start making some bank, like some serious money for yourself so you can set yourself up and do more shit that you like. Like, don't worry about chicks right now. Like, when do you get the girls? You know, how do I get the girls? Like, when you're going through a divorce and you're stressed the fuck out, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to date because you haven't got your like your shit dealt with like you got baggage right um you know get a friends with benefits if that's all that you need you know for the time being but just don't worry about it as much as you worry about it is is really what i want to tell you on this one okay so you just right. dive i appreciate it yeah okay cool thanks john all right john was a little buzzy so i so i needed to kind of like you know get to the end of that I was getting buzzed in my headphones. Um, got guys in the chat saying a little light, 57165. Yeah. Holy shit, does your piece standing up or sitting down? Yeah, like, it's okay. Look, guys, you know, when you get married and you get beat up through, through family law and you got a kid, and I mean, like, one of the things that happens when you're – guy that gets married and you have a kid is your testosterone levels drop so you go softer right i mean evolution doesn't want you to compete for whatever reason if you if you sit around being like all parenty and stuff like that or motherly because 
I mean, they generally, you know, convince men to change diapers and feed bottles and all that kind of shit. And, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, you know, if you can make three, four, five thousand dollars an hour going out doing work, let her change diapers and bottles and shit like that. So men often when they get divorced and as they're married, end up kind of weaker and softer, you know, betatization through a thousand concessions. I talk about that in my book. Uh, if you're, my book is piled under my accounting bills. Um, if you're newer to my channel, get it. It's on Amazon. I'm writing the follow up to it as well. So there's, so there's more literature coming your way. Don't worry about that. Um, I'm basically, you know, when I'm having these podcasts and I'm having conversations, like, I mean, this is, this is potentially good material. Cause what I'm, cause what I'm putting in the books as a result of the podcasting is really stuff that I see that pop up the most. It's the most useful that can basically save guys' lives. I mean, the sub subtitle of the book is a no bullshit guide to winning with women in life. It's true. That's, that's what I'm giving you, man. But that's what happens to guys. So beat up on him a little bit. So he hears you. I know he hears you. He's here. He's watching. He's seeing the chat. Um, you know, it was a sip maneuver to go out with that, with that girl and, you know, spend extravagant money and, and, and travel on a first date. Right. Um, not, not my recommendation. If you want my recommendation, it's in my book, go check it out. All right. Let's see what Joe's got for us here. Hey buddy. Yo, Rich, what's up, man? What is up what How got are for you? You tonight? Uh, not, not much, man. Uh, first off, just wanted to say that, uh, you know, I'm a recent fan and I just got turned on to the, this whole Manosphere Red Bill stuff back in October. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just getting out of a kind of a ser serious relationship, have a, have a child with the ex. We were, we were engaged, you know, it was one of those, after reading your book recently, I, I realized, and, and I'm reading the rational mail right now. Mm -hmm. Almost done with it, <clears throat> but I, I I realized that the the one itis mentality that I had, you know, both my parents are are still married, and um, you know, just having that one mentality, like she finally finally met a girl who who loved me for me, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I felt like think I she you know, she was in my frame for a while, and then this is when I started to realize like she just started to push me away constantly and then mm -hmm. throw me back in and, and this was you know six months six months into the relationship we find out that we're having a kid so my dumb ass decides to propose to her four months later thinking things mm -hmm. will be better and that that doesn't that doesn't work um Wait, are you guys still together or you said you broke up we we are we are not together no okay. I, I i actually walked away mm -hmm. uh back in uh september of 2020 Left, mm -hmm. left my daughter, left, uh, left my ex, left my car with her and everything. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, fast forward, um, we've got five rental properties and, uh, I've got a, you know, six, six figure job that I didn't have back then. Mm -hmm. My life has completely changed, you know, since, <laughs> since leaving her. But I, what I will say to your audience is like, this is somebody that I thought was feminine. And she mm -hmm. even told me like she wanted to be, she want she wanted to please me. You know, mm -hmm. she wanted to make my life easy and do all these things for me. But she had all these feminine uh, feminist friends. I mean, a few of them were covens. I'm not sure if you know what that is, but a what? A coven. They're like What's that? they're like witches, and it's very popular in, in New England. That's right. Oh, uh, this is the shit that. Um... Aaron Cleary talks about these fucking witches. Yeah, they all go and they do mushrooms and pr practice just taking the masculine frame away from men. It's fucking crazy. Sorry if that. Yeah, no, that, like, yeah. It's up your algorithm, but. Yeah, like you want to avoid that if you can, obviously. I mean, but a lot of the time stuff like this doesn't appear right away. And, and two. I've always said women, you know, reserve the right to change their mind at any given time. So the chick you marry today is not the chick you're going to be with in three or four right. or 10 years. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that's a, so that's a valid point. So, um, did you have a question? No, I was, more of a show? I was, I was really, I really just wanted to introduce myself. I talked to Jaron, um, a couple, couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Just did you end up joining the 10% a few clicks away from, from joining. Um, yeah. 
just trying to trying to get some things uh you know just buttoned up over here my daughter's uh, almost three and my my ex and i just figured out 50 50 custodial physical in the state of massachusetts so if any of your listeners are thinking you know this is a liberal state it can be done it it, it was a process a lot of fighting back and forth but i um, i just want i wanted to tell you real quick um I, I, I almost I almost messed up over, over the weekend. Um, so it was my daughter's dance recital, and uh, and her mom wanted to you know do the dance recital, and and I was like sure, you know let's 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 do it. My dad my dad came and everything, and uh, we decided to like take her out to dinner after, and mm-hmm. she was all you know dressed up, all nice and stuff. A couple of drinks led to another, you know. We were at dinner right near my house. And then she comes back to my place. You know, my daughter's here. We give her a bath. And she's just giving me all these hints, like all these signs. And I even I even said, like, listen, I kind of know what you're doing. I noticed a 100,000-pound gorilla. Mm. I'm kind of, you know, I, I, I w- it, was, it was at that point where things probably, if, if, if our daughter went to bed, things probably would have gotten, you know. Ugly, but it didn't, it didn't happen. And I was just like, afterwards, I'm like, man, I'm so, I'm so grateful that that didn't happen. But it was, it was, you know, it was in that moment. It was so hard not to, man. Look, Um, it's, it's pretty common for that to, to go down. Um, She's obviously seeing your new life. You've got a bunch of doors, you know, you got rental income, income's gone up for you. Um, You've become a lot more attractive to her, uh, obviously, but you saw what happened last time you got involved with her in a relationship. You went through betatization. You turned into a bit of a bitch, right? Yeah. So a hundred, a hundred percent. But I mean, like she is your kid's mother. So, you know, make sure you have a good relationship. It's just, I would not recommend, you know, going, I've seen guys leave marriages or get thrown out of marriages and then remarry the same woman again or get, or get involved with her or live with her or have another kid with her. And it's like, it never works out. It's like, round two of more bullshit. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, there, are, there are times where when she, when she shows me signs of just like being nice and things that, you know, I was attracted to when we were together, I, I, I won't lie to you. Like I, I think about, you know, like what, what if this could, what if we can make this work for, you know, for our child, for the bit, for the sake of our child. Right. But at the end of the day, it's not, it's all of not. her friends are witches, dude. Like, like what else do you need me to tell you? <laughs> no, I, 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 dude, I'm, I'm, I'm a year removed from literally like convincing myself. Like, like, like a year ago, I was like, I need to get this woman back, you know, for the sake of my child. And, yeah. uh, and the, a lot, of, a lot of shit is, a lot of stuff has ha- happened and changed, but I'm still, you know, there are moments where I get, I get like weak in the knees, and, you know, but well, you're only going to get weak in the knees if you don't have other options in your phone. I don't. And, um, I so haven't been, get I yourself some other options and then you won't be looking at her as an option. Yeah. And what, after reading your book and, you know, try to look in the mirror and say like, where are you? Like, if you're a six then stay off the apps, right? Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, I, I, I think that I pro, I'm probably, I mean, I've got the money I've got, you know, um, I go to the gym every day. Um, but, um, I don't know if like, I'm, I'm really just working on the mental stuff, mm-hmm. right? Like my, my two and a half year olds pretty important to me, but at the same time, like I, I also want to have a personal life. I'm in the South shore of Boston and there's purple hair gorillas everywhere. I and mean, there's not, <laughs> not that many you know, options. I'm like 20, 20 miles away from Boston, which is like the cream of the crop. And it's tough for me to get there. So it's like, yeah. I'm just, I'm just trying to like, well, 20 know. miles ain't much, but, uh, no, yeah, you, like you've got to get yourself some better options than, um, than a, a fucking witch basically. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, a, I'm looking forward to joining the community, man. I just wanted to say hello. Your book has really helped me a lot. And, uh, I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you so much. Man. All right. And guys, if you do read the book and you enjoy it, um, the greatest compliment you could give me is just going to Amazon and letting people, letting other guys know that you enjoyed it and that you recommend it for whatever reasons you got out of it. Um, Very, very helpful and kind of you when you guys do that. I I do see the reviews. Um, 
dudes in the chat here going, just buy a boat. Chicks love boats. <laughs> yeah, boats are fun. Uh, I do enjoy my boat membership. All right, let's see what uh, Chris has got for me here. Hey, uh, can you hear me? Rich. Uh, you're a little low. I don't know if you can turn up your volume. All right. I'll try to speak as loud as possible. And um, Rich, I'm 22 years old, and essentially my question is, I really want to just be free, get out of the matrix. I don't want a woman. I don't want a house. I just want out. Okay. So what are you asking me? Essentially, I'm saying is, what's the best way to just get out? Like, I'll just listen to Andrew Tate a bit. It's the best way just to make a lot of go money. And, go and live on the land and fucking farm and hunt. And you don't need to deal with women. You don't need electricity. You don't need to vote. Mm. You think off-grid's an option? Because, you know, at the end of the day, it might come for you. Sorry? Off-grid's entirely an, an option. But, I mean, you want to be in a country where it's not hostile. So you sound like you live in the United Kingdom? No, I live in Ireland. So Ireland, okay. Yeah. So I don't know what the government's like in Ireland, but um, you know, find yourself it's not a bad place. Time in Australia, but it's well, there. well, find yourself a place where you know being off the grid would work for you if that's what you really want. I mean, if you don't, I do want to travel as well. To be honest with you, that's okay. So fucking caveat. travel, dude. Yeah, like set yourself up in such a way that you can earn money wherever you are in the world. Travel, you know, if you find yourself in an environment or a country that you don't like and it's time to fucking, you know, bounce and just get on a train or a plane or a car or a bike or whatever and just get the hell out of there and hightail it out. Um, you know, you meet a woman that you like and you dig her vibe, have fun until it's no longer fun for you and then you bounce, you know, like just just basically follow the concept of mental point of origin, which is putting yourself first, you know, with every decision that you make, where you're going to live, where you're going to go, who you're going to hang out with, if you're going to bang or not, all that sort of stuff. Like, are you putting yourself first? Right. Yeah. Is it, okay. you know, is it going to take you off your mission? Is it going to take it off your purpose? I mean, you don't need anybody's permission. You don't need to call in and ask me if that's okay to do. If that's what you want to do, then you go do it. You may find that you don't like it though. Like you may find that it's not for you and that you're looking for something else. Well, at least you tried it and you went on walkabout and you found out that it's not for you. Right. I'm kind of more asking maybe a status and what is the best way, what would be the best way for me to make money online? Like I, I just. The, uh, okay. So the best way to make money while living that kind of lifestyle in an online fashion um, is included in my course on the school of entrepreneurship. That's essentially what the course is about. It's, it's creating yourself an easy, lucrative and fun business. And that's uh an acronym that I got from Joe Polish. There's another kind of business you can run, which is hard, annoying, lame, and frustrating, which are the shitty businesses that people mostly cook up. So everything in that course describes what you want to set up for, why you want to set up for it. It deals with questions around legal, government, uh, employees, HR issues, all, all that sort of stuff. That course is going to open up again in August. Um, and if you're watching this as a replay, it'll be pinned in the top comment of the video, but just opt into the email list and you'll be notified when it's open, you know, to enroll. But that's essentially, you know, long story short, too long didn't read is you want an elf business. You want something that is location independent, that doesn't tie you down to any location and lets you earn money wherever you decide to go, as long as you have a connection to the internet. And I talk about a lot of different options in my course. Right. And I'm offering hard work, but is there a way to get where it's not super time intensive? Or is it always going to be like those big, long 100 hour weeks or 80 hour weeks, if you're not successful? Um, how much money do you need to live on on a monthly basis? Oh, fuck all. Like um, 5, 10, 15? No, that's not. Five? I actually, I don't care at all. Like, <laughs> I mean, for me, it's just a roof over my head, a bit of food, and I don't care. Honestly, I, okay, I just well, want a simple life. Okay, well, if you're at that point, then, I mean, like, honestly, you could probably work 15, 20 hours a week and make easily five to $10,000 a month, right? Oh, yeah. It, yeah it's sure. it's going to take a bit, to, a bit of work to ramp up to it, and then you can peel back some time spent on it, you know, once you set up the systems and you've got a good recurring source of revenue. Uh, but yeah, it's entirely possible to do it with very little hours worked. I mean, you sound like the kind of guy that was very early on, you know, described as MGTOW, like the guys that go their own way. You don't hate women. You just don't give a fuck. You just kind of want to do your own thing. You don't want anybody to bother you. You don't want people to tell you what to do. I get it. I totally get it. And it's entirely possible for you to do that. It's, it's not as hard as you think, you know, to make money 
online. And that's why I put the course together. It's like, look, you know, it's a gold mine of information. You can go and spend 30, 40 grand on a two year course with a bunch of stupid books that are going to give you fuck all in a community college or a university, or you can spend a thousand bucks and grab my course and get everything you need. Just one last question, I promise, uh, Rich, just not waste time. Um, so you think the off-grid is better than kind of what Andrew Tate kind of uh, says more about just getting a load of money and just renting and just, just kind of move around and be as, as much on the grid as possible, like you just have multiple places? Well, you're talking about two different things because, I mean, you're saying you don't care about money and you don't need money, but then you're yeah, but I care about saying that I want to make a lot of money. Travel. Yeah, money, money equals freedom. I mean, there's no question about that. I mean... If, if I've got more money than you, then I'm more free than you are, right? Because I have options, because I have more options, okay. right? So money will equal more freedom. There's no question about that. Uh, like, listen, like the starting point for most conversations for me when I talk to people and then ask me about making bank, it's like, yes, make a lot of money. You can be influential. You can do things. You can solve problems with money. It's not about getting money to get the girls. Like most people, you know, automatically connect to. It's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> it's you you acquire wealth to solve problems problems yeah. in your life and if you want the lives of people within your inner circle maybe your family maybe your kids maybe a chick if you have a chick in your life that's worthwhile solving her problems for you see what i'm saying though right but it's first and foremost it's for you okay I understand. okay right so money is an important part of that equation for sure no question okay thank it. you so much time for time all right chris thanks buddy um, somebody's asking here about writing a chapter on the money part. And yes, I will spend, uh, some time on bank in the follow-up book. So don't worry about that. Um, what do we got here? The lines are still open, by the way, guys, if you want to call in, um, probably going to be on for another 15, 20 more minutes. Just check in the chat here to see if I missed anything. Again, it's a little busy right now. Pat Stedman's Polish passport. Is that guy still around? Uh, yes, this is very true. And thank you for the five stars. I appreciate that. Uh, if you want the ebook version, if you go to my link tree, um, which is on all my social media, you can find a link for Gumroad and you can uh, get a copy there if you just want that. If you don't have a, a Kindle or whatever, you can just download like a PDF. Um, okay. Looks like I'm all caught up. I got a KK here. So let's see what KK has got for us. All right. Can you hear me? All right. Hello, man. Can you hear me? Yeah. What do you got for me tonight? Um, I'm from India. I'm 23 now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm visually impaired. You understand? I'm sorry, say that again. You're what? I'm visually impaired. I don't know what that means. What is that? I'm going blind slowly. Okay. Now, that how do you, you know, go through the life? What? So, you know, what do you think uh, about my life, you know? Well, I don't know anything about your life, but I can tell you losing your eyesight sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm, you could say I'm visually impaired. I have to fucking wear glasses to read my screen or see anything right now. Otherwise it would just be a fucking blur for the most part. And I used to ride motorcycles at three o'clock in the morning without glasses on and see fucking, you know, in the dark perfectly well. So look, life is going to throw curveballs at you. You're going to get, you're going to lose your eyesight. You're going to lose your hearing. You're going to get old. You're going to get decrepit. You're going to get burns on your arms, right? You know, third degree burns for whatever reasons. Life is going to throw shit at you, right? What yeah, are you going to do? Are you going to curl up? Um, Hear me out. What are you going to do? Are you going to curl up in a ball and be a little bitch and cry about it? Or are you going to find ways to, you know, thrive, right? With, with, with chaos, with complexities, yeah. that is what separates the wheat from the chaff. You see what I'm saying? Winners yeah. will win, losers will lose. So losing eyesight or having a degenerative disease that's taken away your eyesight, how do you want yes. to handle it? Yeah, I I know that whole victim mentality, you know, uh, problem solving, creative, be creative, you know, that kind of stuff. But it, it you know, sometimes gets you so hard. 
surrendering surrendering to the realities of life is what the unplugged must do right a lot of guys get upset because oh women are a hypergamous she's never going to love me for who i am she's always going to be looking for the bigger better blah blah fucking blah and they start crying and it's like no real like truthfully like unplugged men surrender to things that they can't control and if you can't control the fact that you're losing your eyesight you surrender to it and you adapt and you move on somebody made a comical statement here he says yeah move on dude over here says you can't tell the ugly ones from the pretty ones you know you can find way like there's silver linings and everything life is a shit show of fucking oh. chaos that is going to come your way are you going to lose or are you going to learn right so it's yeah. like if you want to win then win if you want to lose sit back and resign yourself to failure it's entirely where you sit in your own head uh, I've, I've tried for jobs like you know <laughs> the first question is like what are you going to do to me what are you going what can you do for me uh, that that thing no one is going to hire uh, me I, I i tried to start businesses find uh, find a way to make money for yourself without eyesight being part of that problem yes uh, it's 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 kind of you know uh my my parents are uh, cousins so that's uh genet genetic deficiency so i, I just want to yeah but you can't you know, do anything about that you can't yes. choose your parents like why even bring it up who cares yeah right all right okay we're going to we're going to move on for that cuz like honestly it's like it's dark out what do i do i don't know turn on a fucking light man it's dark out the sun will come up in the morning let's see what nick's got for us here what's up nick how's it going rich how you doing man well uh talking about your subject about the be in the beginning of the show that i had this idea floating around i just wanted to run it by you that uh women women have an innate fear built into their system and that's how media is corrupting them into doing things that are against their own best best interests mm -hmm. that you know for, like for example the bots babe they they're overcompensating for fear of looking weak or women that are you know how do i say it women that are uh, anxious they are fear of uh, you know making a wrong decision and the media is using that to influence them so i just wanted to run that by you and see what you thought yeah women are fear based man they're definitely like as soon as the pandemic hit the first people to start going all like scared and you know masking up and you know was beta men and feminized women you know like that's yeah. that's how it rolls like men lead and protect and women generally follow so when they try to convince women to be more like men they just end up like awful versions of women and that's how you get these boss bitches they're not well, they're, they're not really bosses like no they're not they're not going to beat they're me up <laughs> they're over overcompensating for looking weak and there's nothing wrong with being the weaker sex but it's the I reason know. why they call them the weaker sex they're the ones that make the babies Exactly. And it's just, I guess it, you can't be vulnerable and strong at the same time. Right. It's like, you know, pick one. Right. Exactly. Okay. Well, I just, uh, that was rolling around inside my head. So I just wanted to see what other people thought about it. Yeah, no problem. All right, Nick. Thanks. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, let's see here. It's, these chats are just going off the chart. Do, 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 do. Oof, these guys. You guys are always, everybody's got an opinion in the live chat about the callers. <laughs> uh, yeah, life is a shit show of chaos. Excellent quote. It is. Like, stop expecting life to be easy on you. You know, people used to, um, you know, when I was younger, people used to say, like, why are you so hard on yourself, right? It's like, motherfucker, if I'm not hard on myself, I'm not going to get anything done, 
Okay. The reason why you're broke, poor, stupid, sexless, whatever it happens to be is because you're not hard enough on yourself. Oh, you know, if I just lay back, money will come to me. Sure. If you want a government check, if you want like the bare minimum, of course, something will come to you. Is that what you want? Just something, right? Do the fucking work, man. Be harder on yourself. The world, the world is a very fucking difficult place. Okay. As, as easy as it is to live in today's world versus a thousand years ago, we have running water. I can make a tea and heat up a fucking kettle of water in seconds. Well, not seconds, but very quickly. I wouldn't have to go and gather wood and light it on fire and put water in a pot and hang it over the fucking fire to heat it up to make a tea. You do all these things very quickly, right? I open a tap, it comes out. It always works. I want hot water, I slide it over the other way, it comes out. Yeah, the world's a lot easier today, but getting what you want out of the world today, all of this, all of these conveniences, guys, running water, flushing toilets, heating and air conditioning, cars, airplanes, trains, fucking air, like all the modern, conven- all these nerds you see scooting around on these electric buggies and bicycles and shit. For the life of me, I don't know why they don't fucking pedal anymore and they got to get electric bikes. Like you're that fucking lazy. You can't ride a bike anymore. Zipping around like this, like all these modern conveniences, they pussify you as a man. They weaken you, right? The world is tough. And even though you have modern conveniences, it still remains tough. So you need to be a tough person to do something with yourself. You know, if you want to get anywhere in the world, that's why I get guys that are like, Hey Rich, uh, you know, I'm dating this single mom and she's got four kids from four different fathers and she's 15 years older than me, but she's really swell and touches my pee pee sometimes. Do you think it's a good idea sort of thing? Or like the random guy that's like, I'm losing my sight. I can't do anything about it. What do I do? I don't know. Move on. Right. Find something you can do. Right. Learn a new skill. Do you like music? I mean, you don't need to see to play a guitar or play a piano. I don't know. I mean, what do you got? What do you got except for problems? If look, I used to have people come, come in my office when I was running my business and they'd always come in with these fucking problems. Most of them were very easily solvable. And I was on a call one time with my business coach and I'm like, this is fucking driving me nuts. It's taking up my day. And he said to me, he goes, this is Cameron Harold, by the way, I put him on a podcast on my, uh, playing to win series. Go check it out. It's from like about a year ago. And he goes, Send them away if they don't come with solutions. He goes, if they come knocking on your door, I got a problem, you know, how do I solve? It's like, what the fuck am I paying you for? Like, I'm paying you a lot of money to do a job. Why can't you solve problems? He said, send them away and say, if you're going to bring problems to me, come with at least two potential solutions to that problem. And when I started doing that, my days were a lot more freer. Chris, what's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. Nice to to, uh, see you, uh, Mr. Cooper. Uh come across a few of your videos on the uh, entrepreneurs in cars in the last two years. Uh, I have one question for you. Go ahead. You've, uh, a couple of the videos I mentioned are the uh, sales and anchors kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, would you consider uh, like cutting uh, cutting family ties if uh, they were being an anchor to development absolutely. and all that? Absolutely, 100%. Shit. <laughs> fucking well, that's fucking it. A, yeah, Absolutely. Oh Jesus! No, that's a, that's a, that's a very. I don't, thing hey, look, <laughs> if I'm, you know, if I'm going somewhere and you're not along for the ride, I can share DNA with you. I'm just not taking you along for the fucking ride. I'm just going to keep you at arm's length. It doesn't matter to me. You've got to be ruthless, man. No, I'm that's saying, fair. Enough. I'm not saying being an asshole. You know, cut them out of your kid's life. Uh, you know, I mean, look. If they're doing something that adds complexity, you know, to your family or to raising your kids or kid in a way that you see is beneficial to them and they want to interfere, I I don't give a fuck, you know, remove them from your kid's life for the, you know, for the time being, if you have to, you know, to, to, to make that statement, to make that point, you guys need to get tougher, man. It's like, you know, well, you know, this girl and, you know, she's doing this, that and the other thing. Look, if she's being an asshole, then cut her out. You know, if your family's being an asshole, then then, then put some distance, you know, time out. I'm not going to see you for six months. I'm going to skip Thanksgiving this year. I'm not going to come around Christmas. Well, why not, Chris? Why aren't you coming? Da, da, da. Why aren't you going to bring the kids? That, 
I've already told you why. I'm not going to explain myself again. You've, you know, you've heard my explanation. Maybe go solve that problem and I'll invite you back into my life. I still love you. I still care for you. If there's an emergency, you know, you know where to find me, but I'm not going to play this bullshit game with you. Oh, that's, uh, that's really uh, opened up uh, quite a bit of perspective. I found that uh, question in my life pretty, very, very difficult to, and to, uh, to answer and constantly overthinking. But uh, no, look, uh, yeah, yeah. Very good. Thanks, if, they, if they cause if, if they cause me complexity, then yeah, thank you very much. All right, you got it, man. Yeah. So, in the chat, he says doing a nice soft next with family works well, and I would have to agree with that. You know, like you know, the concepts that you that you use dealing with women just don't apply to women. You can apply them to many different areas of your life. Your mom is being an asshole for whatever reason. Sorry, don't want to deal with your shit. I'm not coming around. Oh, why not? You already know why not. Stop doing that and maybe I'll come around again. All right, soft next. Practice dread on your mom, sister, and daughter. Another dude says, um, John was asking when the business course is available. Get on my email list, which will be pinned in the top comment, or just opt in to, um, hang on a second here. Do I have it? It's in my link tree. I wish I could get that stupid thing to show up on the screen the way that it does or the way it's supposed to do it. Here, I'll drop it in the live chat. How about that? Make it simple for you guys. So it's a mindset course. Uh, this link will take you to Teachable. So opt in to the list. Course launches... August-ish, let's say mid to late August. Okay, so I dropped that in live chat. Get on that list. You'll be notified when you can grab um, the course. All right. Um, I Guys, listen. I truthfully hope that you take this content. Yeah, we play games. We, you know, we crack jokes. You know, we have a laugh from time to time on, on certain things. But in all seriousness... There's still work that needs to be done on ourselves as guys and on the people that are on the inside, on within the inside of the perimeter that I talked to you about drawing, right? You, you know, you want to draw a, a perimeter around yourself and the people that you care about. People on the outside, let them do whatever the hell they want. People on the inside, do what you can, you know, because they're part of your tribe sort of thing. Build that tribe. You know, you can build a tribe of um, of men. Like I've built the tribe of my community, right? Like I've got guys like Moff and Jaron. They're going to do their uh, stereo show after this. It's a bit of a companion show. Good dudes. I'm going to meet up with them next month um, doing a, a meetup. Those are some of the things that are options too when you get involved in communities, right? Um, so look for opportunities to do stuff like that. Uh, put it in the ticker below. It's just entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash community. You can learn more about it over there. But yeah, go go check out uh, Jaron and Moff. Uh, they'll be on for a bit on the stereo app. Just search for Moff, M-O-F-F. And um, hope you guys enjoyed the show. Give a like and a comment downstairs. Uh, downstairs, you know, whatever, down in the comments for the algorithms. And uh, I'll drop those links in the uh, top pin comment so you can get what you need to. But just at the end of the day, guys, just get out and do the fucking work. Please. Peace out. <laughs>